In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are we who today come in the name of the Lord. This is indeed a holy day, what all we are partaking of and attending to today. So likely a question that may arise is what makes something holy? Certainly, the grace of God makes something holy. But holiness is twofold. It is when our Lord makes something holy and our participation and attendance to such. So I ask you, dear brothers and sisters, to enter with me on a pilgrimage journey to the great city of Jerusalem. In 2019, after graduation from Holy Cross Seminary, and before joining the St. Mark family, Presbytera, our oldest daughter and I, joined a group of students as we journeyed through Israel and other venerable sites around. And it was indeed a remarkable thing. But I was reminded of how that day entering the city, how our Lord made it a holy city. Jerusalem was not a holy city before our Lord Jesus Christ entered it. And it's about how we faithfully attend to it as to our participation in its holiness. How we receive it, how we receive our Lord who entered that city. So I can tell you that there are trinkets, there are many things in the bazaar, there are different faith groups in Jerusalem. So truly, to go to the Holy Land is to see the places that the Lord went, but also our attendance and our participation in that which was made holy by God. So everything in this life, this life is sanctified, this life that we have is holy, but how do we participate to make it a holy life back to God? What do we do daily? What do we do in our spiritual walk through Great Lent and now Holy Week, which is to come? How do we enter into the Holy City with our Lord? One way is certain. We are here today, and just as our faithful stewards adorn the archways as you entered into church, I truly felt as though I was entering those holy gates that Jesus Christ himself entered on a humble donkey in order to be in the city and to make it holy and to see through all of the things for our salvation. So it's a great blessing as we gather today because today we are the ones who come in the name of the Lord. For blessed are we who come today in attendance to this great feast. Blessed is that child who came with her parents for the first time today into the name of the Lord. I'd like to remember the few different people that we read of in today's gospel narrative. Inviting Christ into your home and into your heart and by preparing a table for him to rejoice. Today, we are welcoming Christ into our homes and into our hearts. This morning we hear of Judas Iscariot. We know that he is the one who deviated his life away from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We, we will be tempted to side and partake of things of the world that distance ourselves from God. Indeed, it is difficult when we are in torment and in the moment and see the opportunity and pleasures of the world. But our Christian life is all about what we do when we face these moments and trials. So who are we on a daily basis? Who are we today as we see our Lord Jesus Christ entering the holy city, entering our holy church? More importantly, how will we conduct ourselves today? Will we conduct ourselves like Judas himself? Or will we conduct ourselves as Martha and Mary, who welcome to receive Christ into their lives? We too can receive him into our hearts 
today as we prepare to receive Holy Communion? Or will we liken our lives to Judas at this time, who denied Christ and left the grace-filled opportunity to be a disciple of our Lord, one who was specifically chosen by our Lord and gave up his life for societal pleasures and love for himself? Who are we today? Following this, we learn of the great friend of Christ, Lazarus, whom our Lord raised from the dead just days prior. This miracle of bringing Lazarus back to life became the source for many to know more of God who had become, who had the power to raise the dead. Great throngs of people started to gather as they heard and they saw Lazarus. They would arrest him, and the chief priests said that they would arrest Lazarus if they saw him and put him to death to diminish the faith from taking further root in God's people. Certainly, this plan of the chief priest is a foreshadowing of what would eventually be the sentence they would impose and see through to Jesus Christ. So even in his approach to the holy city, we see the wrongful accusations and crucifixions of Christ by the leaders of society. Like the person of Judas, the chief priest and the Roman civil rulers chose the side with the temptations of pride, greed, and fame, and by doing so, lose their life by taking the life of our Lord and Savior and King and God. Today, my brothers and sisters, how will we take today's Lenten journey? How will we take these palms that are blessed today? How will we take the Eucharist that we receive into our lives and have strength for this great week that is to come? How will we attend to the saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord? Will we walk through the holy city of Jerusalem and attend to the things that our Lord is giving us to partake in? Or will we look at it as if it was a blank page in a book? Or will we fill our lives with the services and the prayers of great and holy week? My brothers and sisters, today is certainly an opportunity for us to proclaim that blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, but also Blessed are we who come in the name of the Lord to see our Lord Jesus Christ, to come into the holy city, to come into the holy church of St. Mark as we lay down our cares of life and receive the King of all that is to be glorified in the days to come through his glorious resurrection in just a week's time. May our Lord Jesus Christ continue to guide us on this day and forevermore. And my brothers and sisters, Blessed are we who come in the name of the Lord today and forevermore. Amen.